Hello everybody. In this video today we're going to take a look at this ViewQuest Retro Mini DAB radio. This was from eBay. I'll just pop the listing up on the screen. Now it was sold as faulty and if I remember right it didn't actually say what was wrong with it. So let's open it up and have a look. Da -da. Nice. Still got the cellophane on the handle. Okay so this is designed by VQ, formerly ViewQuest. Retro Mini Made in China, DAB, FM radio, and Bluetooth speaker. So the DC input is 5 volts at 2 amps. Center pin positive. It's got a USB charge out. Oh, it's got aux in as well, but it also takes batteries. So let's let's pop some batteries in. Okay, see if we can power it on. No. Yep, 6 volts. Okay. Let's take it apart and see what's going on. Hmm. Right, I can see six screws in here and they're quite far down, so I'm going to have to get a different screwdriver. My normal screwdriver is definitely not going to fit down there. Hopefully this bad boy will do the trick. Okay, so we've got some connectors here. Uh, something's pulling. I think it is these connectors. Now it looks like I can remove this panel by removing these screws, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, that's a bit more room. And then I think if I just undo this screw here. The aerial, I think. Right, much more room now. Okay, so I disconnected the the back board there, which is got which is the power and the aux in and the headphones out and the USB out. I mean, first impressions inside here, it doesn't look like there's a lot going on. I think I'm gonna have to get this board out just to get to the the main part of it. that out oh wow okay did not expect that to happen but that might make things a lot easier there we go now we are still attached because we've got the antenna is it or a bluetooth i'm not sure and that's soldered in so don't really want to go messing about with that just yet okay let's just connect the speaker right okay so that's the power on button there and then these are the other sort of mode volume buttons. Everything looks fine. And the screen looks like it's all, I don't know, it just got tape around it. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't know whether the, the screen might work, so there's, there's no point in me messing about with that, because uh, initially it's a, it's a no power issue, isn't it? So let's have a look where the power comes in. So we've disconnected it from there. And then it goes into this point here. And then from there it goes round, it's connected to the DC in. And then it must travel back down to this board. It looks like via this connector, or maybe this connector. So they've very kindly written on, on this board what these things are. So this is the battery negative and positive, that's the power in. And then from this one, we've got the battery, positive, ground, DC 5 volts on this one. We've got USB D minus and plus and HP debt. Not sure what that is. Then we've got, these are the aux connections here. So we've got right and left and ground. And then this is for the headphones. Headphone right, left, left to right, right to left. Don't know quite what that means. And five volts. So this must be where the power. So the power comes in here, exits through here. And at first glance, that ribbon, that ribbon cable looks okay. But 
those soldering joints there do not. They don't look great. I'm going to get them under the microscope and have a quick look at that before I go any further. Okay, so this is the power. Yeah, they're not, they're not, they're not soldered. Yeah, look at that, the pins are moving. Certainly that one is. And that one's okay, that one's okay. But it looks like they're all, they're all loose. Uh, I don't know if that's ripped the pads up or whether the solder blobs have just cracked away from the board. It's hard to see, so I'm going to try and clean it up. Okay, so I'm just going to have a little bit of flux. I'm just going to see what happens when I try and reflow these and see if... I can't tell whether the pads are, uh, are there or not. Ripped the pads off on me. Yeah. Yeah, most pads have. Uh, I don't know, they're probably still making a connection, but they're here, aren't they? The pads have lifted. That one looks terrible. You can see where the pad is creased, the trace. So I guess I just need to check whether they're making good continuity from here. To, uh, to this point, which you can't see on the microscope, but it's just a little bit further away. Right, so they go from here, and then they travel to these points here. So I'm just going to check those with the multimeter and see if it is actually getting there. I mean, even though it looks a mess, the, the traces actually look like they're still intact. So it probably should still work. It's just odd that it's that they're all lifted like that. So the first one goes to this big one here, top right. The second one goes to this one. The third one goes to this one. The fourth one goes to this one. Yeah, everything is, is going where it should be, even though it looks terrible. Right, so even though they looked terrible, they are still going where they should be. What I'm just going to do now is just check the continuity of this ribbon cable. So I'm going to go from this end and into where it should be from here. So that's that one. Okay, so I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. All right, I'm just going to put this power connector back in, and I'm going to put the batteries back in, and let's see if we're getting any voltage. So here we should have six volts, which we do, and then we should also be here, six volts. Yes, we've got six volts there as well. So the six volts is going into here. It's also coming out of here. And I've checked continuity, which means it's also coming out of here. So it is getting to the board. Okay, and then the five volt or the six volts will then travel through to this point here through the ribbon cable. And it will appear on this side here. And then where does it go? So it's that one, and then it goes straight into this little component here. What is that? Diode, I think. That diode is open and 43 kilo ohms that way. So I think that's okay. Should check the other one. It's nine kilo ohms. And open that way. I think they're okay. Let's just check if this switch is working. Because obviously it's not going to turn on if the switch doesn't work, is it? Yep, that works fine. Right, so I can't see anything immediately obvious with this board. I'm going to go around it with the multimeter and check for continuity between all the traces on the on the power line. And just see if I can find anything. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. I don't know whether you can see that on the camera. You can just about make out the display. Can you see it there? Very, very dim. Right, so it is definitely getting some power to it, isn't it? But it's just, it's not, it's obviously not right. Although it does say 0001 now, like it's gone up by a minute. Because it's been on for a minute. But it is flashing a lot. So what could cause that? Right, I'm going to have a, have a look around the board. If I find anything, obviously I'll, uh, I'll report back. Right, excuse the mess, but I feel like I'm actually getting somewhere now. If you look at, you can see the screen now with the light shining on it. It's still flashing, but that is the correct time, 3.45. And it says Virgin Anne, I think, which is Virgin, I don't know, Anne, Atlantic, Anthems, I don't know. I put the aerial back on, 
and when I reconnect the speaker, which is easier said than done in this configuration, I was getting a little bit of sound out of it before. Let's see if I can get it again. Like that. So that could be the reception in my house and it could actually be working okay, but clearly there is... Clearly there is still something wrong because the, the display is just flickering and it's not it's not displaying properly at all. There's no backlight either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate my efforts on this LCD screen. I think it is actually working. I think everything is okay. I've, I've checked all the traces. I've followed the, the power lines. We're getting 6 volts and then uh, 5 point something volts around here. The capacitors here I've taken off and checked. Everything, everything seems to be okay. So... I'm going to focus on this LCD screen now. Uh, I might regret this, but while it's still plugged in, I'm going to... There we go. Right, I'm going to discount the speaker so I don't get done for copyright. Incidentally, I have put pressure on this ribbon cable and it doesn't seem to make any difference. I've taken it out and I've reconnected it. Okay. If you look at that now, with the light behind it, it's still flickering but you can read it much clearer. So clearly the backlight isn't working on this thing either. Right, we've got a couple of wires going in. We've got this red wire here, which I'm guessing gives it power, and we've got a black wire that gives it a ground, and then we've got the ribbon connector here. I think the ribbon connector will be for the data. The data is getting to the screen, so I'm wondering whether there's a problem with this ground or with this power. Power is going to here, the ground going to here. They're both soldered on okay. On the other side is this pad here for the power, and I think that pad there for the ground. Is, is that coming across on the camera? When I'm checking for continuity here between this ground and this ground, the screen does actually get a little bit better. But it's still flickering. Right, okay, check this out if you can see it. So continuity from the power input here to this power pad here. And there is, but look how much clearer the screen gets. Can you see that? Let me get rid of the annoying beeping. I mean, it's still dim, but it stops flickering. I let go, and it disappears. The ground and the the power to the LCD are not, they're not a very strong signal, for want of a better word. Why is that? Let me see what voltage is measuring there. 2.5 volts. I wonder what this LCD screen needs. Probably more than 2.5 volts. I think I'm almost there. I need to figure out where this trace goes. I think I'll follow it around and see what's what's happening. All right, I didn't really want to do this, but I have a working one. It's here. This is from our bedroom. We use it every day. And it's been great, which is partly the reason I wanted another one. But I'm going to use it to fault find. I'm going to take it apart because I'm, I'm, I'm stumped now. Uh, I want to see if I can check the voltage on the LCD screen and just follow the traces around and compare board to board. So that's what I'm going to be doing now. If I find anything interesting, I shall let you guys know. Guys. Right, I've taken this one apart. It is very similar. It's slightly different. This board, so the one on the left is the is my working one. The one on the right is the faulty one. You can see it's the same board, pretty much. This has got a couple of capacitors on the AUX input, I think that is, or the headphone jack. Uh, and also, they're not the same sort of connectors, but the wiring is the same, I think. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try this power board on the faulty one. Then I can eliminate that. If, if that still does the same thing, I can just eliminate that board as being a problem. I've also got the DC jack now as well. So I can use that for power. Okay, so that's the good power board with the faulty display. Not sure you can see it on the screen, but it is it's flickering, it's doing the same thing. So that means that board is is okay. For the sake of completion, let's put the faulty power board on the working main board. Yeah, there we go. That's working fine in a second. Well, I don't know, it should find the correct time. There we go. So yeah, that's what it's supposed to do, obviously. 
Right, I'm just going to check what the voltage is on the LCD screen. 3.2 volts. And it's it wasn't as much as that on this one. I think it was 2 point something. Right, I'll keep comparing these two and I'll come back when I find something. Right, I'm probably going to regret this, but there's a load more components under this screen and I can't get to them. I'm trying to follow the power line from here back and it goes through this resistor and then it goes underneath there somewhere and I can't find it. So I'm going to try and melt these little plastic rivets and see if I can get it off. I have no idea whether this is going to work. Well, it worked. Right, and now I can get to these components that were underneath. Let's get that under the microscope. Some of these soldering uh, joints leave a, a lot to be desired, don't they? I think, I think they're okay, but they're just quite sloppy. Right, just while I'm here, I'm just going to reflow these because they, they don't look particularly great. Right, I forgot to press record on the microscope, but basically I've just reflowed... I've just reflowed these connectors here. The power here, which is for the LCD, does connect up to, I think it's this one, this pin, on the ribbon connector, so I figured it was worth just making sure that was okay while I'm here. Don't think it'll make any difference. And it also comes up around here, and this, this is where I said these don't look great, so I'm just going to reflow these as well while I'm here. Oh, nice big blobs on those now. Right, I've just been checking the resistors around, well, underneath where the LCD is. And they're all reading fine until I get to this one. So this 473 should be a 47 kilo ohm, I think it is. It's reading. Well, it, it's just jumping all over the shop. It's not, it's not giving me a stable reading. And then this one above it, which is directly connected to it, is a 104, which I think is 100 kilo ohms. And when I measure that one, it's giving me 50, 58.8. I mean, I don't know. It's just it's something odd that hasn't happened with any of the others. And as usual, I'm kind of running out of ideas, to be perfectly honest. Because I don't really want to take the screen off my working one. And I don't want to risk damaging it. Although I might have to, just so I can compare. I think I'm going to have to take, take this resistor off and see if it's still reading that. I mean, I, I, I could be barking up with a completely the wrong tree, but it just it just seems odd. It's an interesting way of removing it. All right, let's see what it's measuring now out of circuit. 100.2 kilo ohms. So out of circuit, it's reading fine. Great. Right, th this is really bizarre. So I've been following the 2.6 volt rail um, the one that's reading 3.3 on the working one and I was following it round and it was it I was followed it from where are we from under here basically and then it goes through this capacitor and it comes through the switches it's this trace here and then it goes up here and goes behind the screen It goes up here, up here, up here, and then into that hole there, that via, which is a big via. Um, but anyway, it was measuring 2.6 all the way, and then when I when I put my probe in this hole here, it was measuring 3. Point something. I'll just show you that now. Yeah, 3.3. There's nothing between that switch and that hole. That's just a track. But then when I flip this over, you see that? It's on. It's working. So I don't know what I've done, but it's gone from 2.6 to 3.3, and the screen is on now. But what's really... I mean, I'm really happy, but I'm also incredibly frustrated because I don't know what I've done. Oh, I wish I was filming it, but I wasn't. I'm literally just following that trace. 2.6, 2.6, 2.6, 3.3 flipped the screen back over, and it was on, it was working. I just shoved one of my bristles off the brush that come off through this hole, and it's a it comes out here, so it's just a little jumper underneath here that comes out here, 
and then it goes into this voltage regulator here. And this voltage regulator, I was playing around with it before, and I was measuring the voltages on it, and it was 4.8, I think, on this one. But it was only 1 point something here, but it's now measuring 3.3. Um, the, the only thing I've done is I've cleaned them. I haven't done anything else. Well, having said that, what I did do, and I haven't tried it since I did it, I took that resistor off and put it back on again. <laughs> That's the only other thing I've done. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put it back together, and I'm gonna see if it's still working, or if I get any sound. I don't even know. It might not, might not have any sound now. I don't know. Wow, so everything seems to be working perfectly. I still don't 100% know what the problem was and that is going to drive me insane. But I think a combination of reflowing the solder joints on the ribbon connectors, messing around with those voltage regulators <laughs> seemed to do the trick. One minute they're reading 1.8 or whatever it was and the next minute it was 3 point something which was enough for the LCD. And that's all it was, it just wasn't getting enough power. Now it is. And I'm really, really happy with this. I think it's a beautiful little device. And for the amount that I paid for it, you know, I can't really complain at all. So we now have his and hers view quests for the side of the bed, which is brilliant. So for anyone that's still there, thank you very much for watching and for staying till the end, because most people click off and go, oh, it's working now. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> thank you. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.